Yeah, thank you guys. Good morning, everybody. We're so glad you all are here today. My name is Dan. I'm the pastor here at the church. Thank you guys for hanging out with us this week. And I hope it's been a good weekend. This is a good way to start your week right here at the church. If this is your very first time here, we want to say a special welcome to you, Floribama family. Help me welcome our first-time guests that are here with us. Thank you, guys. How nice is it that it's uh, end of January and we're putting the walls up because it's so nice outside. Come on, man. <laughs> Uh, I don't know where you're from, but if you're not from here, you need to be from here. <laughs> Come on. Uh. Well, listen, if this is your very first time, we would love to connect with you. Um, you can do that a couple of ways. If you got, when you walked in, you should have got a program when you walked in. It's one of our yellow programs. If for some reason you didn't get one, you snuck by one of our amazing greeters, just lift your hand up. You'll want to have this today, and we'll make sure you guys get one. There's information on the back there on how to connect with the church, whether it be our office phone number or email or connecting with us on social media. You can do that there or um, before you leave today we would love to meet you if this is your first time so stop by one of our info tables there's one right over here on the west side and one on the east side of the tent uh, our team would love to meet you we've got a gift that we would love to give you um, and we would love for you to just grab one of our next step cards now this would be for anybody if this is your first time here or you've been coming for a while and you would love to get connected and everything that's happening here, all the events, all the serving opportunities here at the church, you can do that by stopping with one of our info tables, grabbing a next step card, take that next step card and drop it in one of our giving stations. They're located where there's one right here, there's one over there with signs on top of them all and one as you leave today. Drop it in there, we'll get you called, we'll get you connected. That's also a great place if you've got a prayer request of some kind, every week our team prays for all of those requests and we're able to send those out to our prayer team to get prayed for. Doesn't it feel good to know uh, that you've got some people praying for you if you're walking through something? And so you can do that on that next step card as well and drop it in one of our giving stations. Our giving stations are also the place that you have a, a financial gift, a tithes or offerings that you would like to give here to the church. I just want to say thank you guys for your generosity, able to do all things that we do to fulfill our mission of introducing people to Jesus and helping them follow him, as well as all the community partnerships and ministries that we support as well. I want you guys to know um, it's a big deal that you would entrust us with your finances, and so um, we take that super seriously. We ask God for wisdom and direction and how to use those finances to best impact the kingdom in this area, and so thank you guys for that. If you've got your program, open it up. And uh, if you just literally, I just saw some people walk in from both doors. If you didn't get one, just shoot your hand up. We'll make sure you get one. I want to talk to you for just a minute about a program you'll see on the inside there called Celebrate Recovery. Now, Celebrate Recovery is something we've been doing for about 18 months or so here at the church. We haven't taught, you haven't heard us talk a lot about it because we haven't had a centralized location to be able to open it up to the entire church. Celebrate Recovery is an amazing Christ-centered program that helps all of us walk through our hurts, habits, and hang-ups. And, um, and we have the privilege of being part of the second largest Celebrate Recovery in America um, at Central Church, our lead church out of Las Vegas. It's one of the most successful programs that Central does. If you've ever been through Celebrate Recovery or you've been a part of Celebrate Recovery, you know how amazing it is. It's an opportunity for all of us, no matter what we're wrestling with in life, it can be something like an addiction or it can be something like um, grief or guilt or any type of pain, or any type of hurt, um, any type of habit that we need help walking through. It's an opportunity to link arms with other people and to go through it together. I don't know if you've ever tried to walk through some kind of hurt or try to get through a habit or you've been hung up on something before and you try to pull that thing off on your own. It's possible, but it's so much more healthy and better when you're walking 
with someone else or several else people, other people, together. And that's what Celebrate Recovery is. If you want to know information about it, if you want to get connected into it, if it sounds like something you'd want to be a part of, maybe you want to help, um, help others, maybe you want to be helped, maybe you just want to know more information, how to get connected is right there in your program. We're going to have two interest meetings coming up. One of them is going to be on the 18th. The other one's going to be on the 25th, which are both Sundays. And those are going to take place um, at the wharf. Um, we've been generously offered uh, space at the wharf to use uh, for our Celebrate Recovery program. It is going to be amazing. And so uh, reach out to Rick. The information on how to do that is right there. Rick Long, who if you were here a couple weeks ago, shared his story um, of being restored. And so um, you can connect with him and we'll get you all the information you need on that. Even if you're just curious about a few things, reach out to Rick and we will make sure we get those things answered for you. Well, listen, I know there's a whole bunch of people sitting around you um, that you may recognize and you probably, you know, said hey to real quick this morning, but you may not even know their name. Uh, there may be some people that you don't recognize at all. So would you do me a favor? Would you stand with me? Find someone that you don't know very well. Introduce yourself and welcome them to church this morning. <laughs> My 
awesome. Thank you guys so much. Well, again, we're so glad you guys are here. I want to welcome everyone up in our main bar and in our dome. If you guys come ever, and it's not this beautiful, uh, winter time and it's a little bit chilly, summer time and it's a little bit hot. I didn't know if you guys knew, but we have some additional seating areas as well. And those are up on, one of them is up on the second floor in the main bar. All of you guys that are up there, glad you guys are here. And then also right on the first floor in dome, also um, known as the bra room, which is everyone's favorite place to attend church on a Sunday morning. If you've never been in there, I'm not going to explain it. Just go check it out. <laughs> go check it out. You'll see why we call it that. But both of those places are nice and cool in the summer and nice and warm in the winter. Well, pretty special day today for a couple of reasons. Um, I love when we're able to have our communion Sunday, and so today is going to be a communion Sunday, which is how we're going to close out the service today. But before we do that, I'm really super excited about our guest who's going to be with us speaking today. Um, if you've been around the floor of Bama for any amount of time, whether it be um, the establishment, the bar, restaurants, or the church, you've heard John McGinnis' name. John is one of the owners of the floor of Bama. And, uh, and not only does he own the bar and has allowed us to be in here uh, as a church, but John is a devoted Christ follower and attends the church as well. His amazing wife, Shelly, and their family are just one of the most greatest families to be around. I remember a couple years ago, a little longer than that, when my wife and I were considering if this was where God might be asking us to and to pastor, and, um, and John is one of the first people I met. It's kind of a big deal. We're having this church in a bar. It, hopefully it goes well, you know, that meeting. And, uh, and so it couldn't have gone any better. I found out two things about John really fast. I found out that his faith in God was for real. You know what I mean? It wasn't something he just talked about. It ran deep in his life and in his family's life. His faith was genuine. And the other thing I found out really fast is that this is going to be one of my friends for life. I, I knew that right away, and I've had the honor of, of being John's friend since. John's story is amazing. Um, we've asked him to share it with us today. He's got a great word from his heart. So would you help me welcome John McGinnis as he comes up. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, Dan. Thank you guys. So blessed to be here speaking with you today. I appreciate that very much. I'm John McInnes. I'm one of the owners here at the Floor of Bama and uh, blessed to get to talk to you today. I've had some stuff on my heart I wanted to share uh, here at, on this Sunday. And uh, I'll tell you, years ago, you know, the Floor of Bama is a wild and crazy place and we do a lot of stuff, but years ago, uh, Pastor Jeremy from the Perdido Bay Methodist Church came to see me along with John Mason Smith and some others and said, hey, what do you think about doing a church service uh, under the tent every Sunday? And so I started thinking about it and, you know, I, I'd never really, I'd, I'd been open in my faith, but never really like, mixed it with my business. And so I started thinking, I was like, well, heck, we do about everything else in Fort Bama, why not? <laughs> and so we, we all said yes, and, uh, and, you know, we're all thinking 20 or 30 people are going to be under the tent, I guess, having a Bible study, and 300 people the first Sunday, and you see what it's like today, and we have two to three of these services a day on Sunday. So, you know, w between one and 2,000 people every Sunday, and almost 4,000 on Easter and Christmas. So it's been amazing to watch what God's done here at the Fort Bama. Uh, one of the reasons I think he did it here is to say, look, you've, you've boxed up your faith in, inside a church, inside a, a traditional building one time a, a week. And I think what he's saying is, look, you can do it anywhere. You do it in a bar, a honky-tonk, your house, your office. Um, so that, I think, is one of the things he's saying to us with this service. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share my testimony briefly with you. Uh, so you know where I'm coming from, but at, at the end of the year, as we approach the new year, Dan and I were talking, we were talking about New Year's resolutions, and he did a, a service on it, and I was starting to think through my New Year's resolutions, and, and I came to the conclusion they're pretty much temporary. They all, you know, lose weight, get in better shape, we all do them for two months, and then we quit. And so uh, one thing that kind of rained, was on my heart was letting go of things in the past, and um, I think that's the big New Year's resolution because all those things we try to give up, you know, there's a cause to them. Um, I have a, a doctor friend, David LeMay, and he, 
he said he basically fixes the problem, makes your symptom go away. And uh, it's true when you let go of things in the past because they cause a lot of problems and we took a lot of things down. So with that said, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself and then I'll uh, give you the message I had on my heart to share. So I was born in Mobile on 39 and I got a wife, Shelly, she's from Birmingham. Uh, I grew up in a bridge building family. My father was a bridge builder. Um, my grandfather was a recon engineer in World War II. He came back, worked for the Barber County Highway Department, and uh, started with a shovel and one little wood bridge, and my family living in a trailer on the job to literally building a thousand bridges. And uh, a family business, my uncle and my cousin were involved, and uh, together built over a thousand bridges over 30, 40 years. So I grew up in a, in a tough construction family. Uh, we had deep faith, weren't open in our faith, grew up in the Catholic Church. Uh, grew up in Mobile till I was nine, moved to Montgomery, uh, went to the University of Alabama, and then moved back here in 2000. Uh, we were blessed to do a lot of great projects. We had a lot of highs, a lot of lows like everybody. We did struggle at the same time. And uh, God blessed us, and we survived 54 years of the construction business and a lot of other things we've done. And uh, he, th throughout my life, I, I grew up really blessed. I have a great mother, great father, great grandparents, uh, a successful family. Um, never wanted, didn't have everything, but never wanted for anything growing up. And it, when I was 23 years old, we had had all this success and we're extremely happy, a good place in life. And my mother got in a car accident on the way back from our lake house. And she ended up in a coma where she remained for nine months. And so we lived in the hospital for nine, every single day for nine months in Montgomery. And you learn a lot. You know, we got closer to the Lord in that time. I thought about the things that matter in life and the things that don't. And my way of dealing with it, and my father's too, was to pour ourselves even further into our work. So we went from working 14 hours a day, five or six days a week, to a lot more than that. And for years, we poured ourselves into our work and just tucked that pain down. And we cleaned up the city of Orange Beach after Hurricane Ivan. We built the Foley Beach Express Toll Road, the Mobile Bay Ferry. We, um, those preceded that, but uh, a lot of successes, but a lot of hard work and ended up going to New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina. And with our partners, we tore down 10,000 houses and it was the largest demolition project in US history. And during those three years, I wore myself into the ground, killed my health, way too much nicotine and caffeine, and they were my best friends for a few years. And uh, when I wasn't working hard, I was playing real hard, did hundreds of millions of dollars worth of business, was able to buy anything I wanted and do anything I wanted, and off-road racing and skydiving and scuba diving and offshore power boats, and you name it, I did it. And I was pouring myself into those things because um, I love work and I love accomplishments. And, but at the end of the day, I had, I had a hole in my soul I was trying to fill. And see, I believe that God created us all with a peace missing, and that's a relationship with him and Jesus Christ. And I was searching for all these accomplishments, and it wasn't about greed, it wasn't about trophies or people knowing what I did. Like, I was just trying to fill this hole with stuff. And there's no amount of accomplishments, no good job, no alcohol, no drugs, no sex, no party at four men. There's nothing that's going to fill that hole in your soul except a relationship with God and Jesus Christ. And I learned that after I'd hit my knees and was just flat worn out. And so at that point, my dad and I said, look, let's don't do contracting full time anymore. We've done it 54 years. Let's do the government stuff part time. And Joe and Pat, who own the Fort Bama, asked us to carry this place into the future and help with it. And so we started running a beach bar full time and doing construction part time. And um, I get to take my kids to school every day. It's been a blessing in my life, staying in one place. And um, I just, that was a huge turning point in my life when I learned that. And Part of my story, too, is I had a lot to let go of that was causing me to do that. And what I wanted to share with you today is we all tuck things down. It can be, we got a lot of people from different age groups, from young, middle age to later on in life, and everybody's in a different place. But what I found is God word, God's word always reigns true to everybody, regardless of where you are in your life. And everybody in here, whether you know it or not, you've tucked something down, whether you were bullied in school or whether you hurt somebody or whether you went through a divorce, uh, whether you've had an addiction. I, I mean, I can name a hundred things that we've, we've probably all tucked down. And for most of us, it's more than one thing. 
and when you when you tuck things down like that you, you forget about them um, I, I love my mother I'm totally at peace with her passing I'm excited she's in heaven I've never been sad about it since completely at peace but I still tuck that down and it still affected me and affected maybe the way I treat people or do things and and I've had to kind of dig back through my past and try to identify those things that I've forgotten about and um, I'll share with you some scripture I probably should have started with it first Actually, let me skip to this. So Kevin uh, Lace, Kevin's a U.S. Navy SEAL. He was Chris Kyle's best friend and uh, played himself an American sniper. Chris, uh, Kevin's a, a wonderful guy, and um, he helped Brad, train Bailey Cooper in that movie and uh, helped Clint Eastwood direct it. And so, funny enough, at the beginning of this week when I had on my heart talking about letting go of the past, uh, Kevin posted this on Facebook. He put a picture of himself today and himself when he was in Iraq. The man on the right signed a contract and did a job. He was proud of his work and happy to do it. When it was over, it was over. He learned many lessons and gathered as much wisdom as he could. And then he rolled them all into the next part. The man on the left has two degrees, a wife, two children, two careers a bestseller, and a successful 501c3. Those things have been made possible by my willingness to move forward since my time in the military. I am proud of my service, and it still influences heavily, but I don't live in the past. There's a difference between utilizing your memories and being trapped by them. I'll say that again. There's a difference between utilizing your memories, good or bad, and being trapped by them. When you're holding on to the past with both hands, you've got nothing to grab an opportunity with. I'd rather be continually trying to figure out how high I can climb than just a prisoner of the past. So when I was at a pivotal point in my life, we had a family farm uh, up in Montgomery and a close friend of ours had a big farm as well. And one of the things that got us past it uh, past selling them is when you're a guy in Alabama and you got a hunting place you grew up on it's like your family home it's a pretty sacred thing and it was a time uh, you know that when the economy was bad and we were thinking we probably need to sell things we don't need etc and it was really hard to let go of that and we we ended up through a pastor friend of ours with this image of a, a circus tent and a trapeze and you know how you got the trapeze bar and you swing forward well if you grab the bar and you swing forward and you grab the next one and you're holding on like that, what happens if you don't swing, let go? You're stuck, right? It's a pretty powerful image. Now, if you let go, what happens? You swing forward into the future. And so God has an amazing future for you beyond what you can ever imagine. And all you have to do is let go of the past. Because holding on to that issue or that thing or your past is what's keeping you from just easily taking all the great things God has in store for you. When I, when I got that image and, and it really soaked into my heart, I was able to say, okay, I'll let go of that farm that meant so much to me. And five years later, I've got one ten times as big with ten times, I got river running through it, and I mean, just I could go on and on and on. But the only reason that became possible, and I opened my eyes to look for a new place one day, et cetera, is because I had let go. And now I got a place 30 minutes from here and not three and a half hours from here. So it was a great physical image that really helped me move on in life on a lot of things and issues, and, and I hope that helps you as well. Um, share with you uh, some a few things I found as I was searching for scripture. Letting go is one of the hardest things to do. It's so easy to try to hold on to things, but we must trust that our Lord has something better. Letting go of a relationship, hurt, fear, past mistakes, sin, guilt, slander, anger, failures, regrets, worry, etc. It's easy when we realize that God is in control. Let go of the past so that God can open the door to your future. We have to let go sometimes to things we are holding on to that will harm us in ways we don't even understand and God is protecting us. God sees what you don't see and he sees what we refuse to see. Philippians 3, 13, 14. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to take in hold of it, 
But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. And so I tell you my story today because I had to let go of a lot to be able to move forward in my life. And I've had a, a lot of successes and uh, a lot of failures, a lot of highs and lows. But regardless of what goes on in my life, I'm at peace and I'm happy because I place my happiness in my relationship with God and Jesus Christ. And those two things, th that I can control. I can't control anything else. And I believe that's one of, if not the secrets to life. And so I pray that wherever you are in your life, um, it's, it's not too late to just give God your heart and, and your mind and, and just let him just reclaim you and renew you and excite you again. There is nothing you have ever done in your life that will separate you from God's love, grace, and forgiveness. And it's immediate. There's nothing. You're all equal, you're all his children, and there's nothing that my children will ever do or have ever done that will separate them from my love, and it's the same with God. And I'll share uh, one more thing. As I, you know, it wasn't like a lightning bolt for me. It took, a, it took a decade for me to get to the place I'm at, and I had to try to make it a habit every day, which I was pretty good at developing habits. Um, but uh, Willie Robertson's a good friend of mine, and Kevin Lace, and we went to Israel together, and through five days there, uh, we toured the whole country, a lot of biblical history, and we baptized each other in the Jordan River, and we did a lot of cool stuff, and there was a lot to sink in. But the one thing I left Israel thinking about is Willie and I like to get in biblical <laughs> or historical debates, and we were debating about something, and I kept saying, believe, believe. And, and Willie said, he said, John, the guys that flew that plane into the World Trade Center, believed they were doing the right thing. They believed they were going to go to some kind of heaven for doing that. He said, the difference is we know the truth. I know that God is real. I know that Jesus Christ is real. I know that heaven is real and where we're going. And so it's taken me a long time to get there, but I'm there. And I'm just totally at peace with anything in my life, whether it's good or bad, regardless of the storm, because of the relationship I have. Um, and it, getting to that place doesn't mean you don't get to have fun anymore. You don't, like I own the four Bama. I have tons of fun. I, you can go have a beer and go have a few, have a bushwhacker. But no, you, like get in a great place spiritually. It doesn't matter where you are in your life. It does not matter where, where you've been. Let go of the past, but just... You know, I, I, I joked earlier, about, you know, I, I probably needed a psychologist, not prayer, but the, uh, but y you really don't need that kind of help. Or, or some people may. You need a good relationship with God and Jesus Christ, and he will help you identify those things in your past that you've tucked down and let bother you and let, let mold you into a person that God really didn't want you to be. So that's my message for you today. Thank you for letting me stand up here and give it to you, and I appreciate it very much. God bless. Man, how good was that? Listen, I, I wrote a bunch of stuff down, um, but how great was that imagery about the trapeze? I love this phrase that John used, you have to let go of the past to swing into your future. That's so good. I don't know if today you feel like you're hanging on to something, but if you have been, today's your day. Today's your day to let go. And it might be scary to let go, and it may be difficult to let go, and you may not even know what it feels like to let go because you've been hanging on to it for so long. It, it may feel unnatural to let go. And that's where the strength that only comes through God can allow us, maybe even just one finger at a time, to slowly let that thing go. So here's what I would love to do. I'd love to say a prayer for you about that, and then we're going to take communion together. Communion is a pretty special thing for us here at the church for a, a number of reasons, but it goes right along with what John was talking about today. See, we celebrate communion, the Passover meal, the Lord's Supper, because he asked us to. 
couple thousand years ago, Jesus was at his last dinner, this last supper with these other disciples, these disciples, these 12 guys that he had called. And it's recorded uh, three different places in the Bible. I'm going to read out of the book of Luke. The book of Luke says this in the 22nd chapter. You can go home and read this portion for yourself. But it says, when the time came, in other words, when, the, when it was time for the, the dinner, Jesus and the disciples sat down together at the table. Now, they had done this same thing year after year for the last few years, spending time with Jesus. They would sit down and celebrate what was called the Passover meal. It was a celebration of God delivering them out of the hands of the Egyptians of slavery. And so they would eat together. They would share a meal together. They would talk about the goodness of God, and Jesus said this, I have been eager, very eager, to eat this Passover meal with you before my sufferings begin. See, Jesus knew it was just moments away from the arrest, moments away from after that, the beating and the whipping and the crown of thorns and the cross and the spear in his side and the burial. He knew that suffering was coming, and so he wanted to gather with his disciples for one last meal. And here's what happened at that meal. Jesus took bread. He broke it into pieces and then he gave it to his disciples. And here's what he said. This is my body. This represents me, which I give for you for as often as you eat this bread, do it in remembrance of me. See, choosing, and you may have been to a church before where they use loaves of bread or little wafers, and the reason we do that has deep significance. We do it because it represents the suffering of our Savior. What he went through over the next few days and eventually ended on the cross was a giving away of his life for us. And so in a few minutes when we take communion, there's going to be loaves of bread in people's hands. You're going to rip a piece of bread off of that loaf as a representation of Christ's body. And then he goes on to say this. In the same manner, he took a cup of wine and he blessed the cup. He gave thanks and he said this to the disciples. This cup is the new covenant. It's a new promise between God and people. An agreement confirmed with my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice given for you. When we take that bread, and then the next thing you do is you're going to take that bread and you're going to dip it into that cup. Not only are we remembering God sending his son in the sacrifice of his body, but also the blood that was shed that the Bible says completes in the forgiveness of all sin. All sin of the past that we may hang on to, that we may feel guilty for. I love something else John said that I wrote down, that letting go of the past, it's never too late to let go. And you may be walking around today with with some pain and some hurt and some things that you've done and you just feel beyond guilty. You, You feel like you've crossed the line that was too far for God's love and forgiveness. But what communion represents is that no one is beyond God's reach. No single act or multiple acts are beyond God's forgiveness. And then he goes on to say this, for as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Why do we do communion? To remember Jesus, to remember his great sacrifice so that we don't soon forget how good God is. And though we may make mistakes, we are forgiven. That's what we celebrate with communion. And you don't have to be a member of this church. This could be your very first time here. You could have been here since the, d- the doors open or the tent thing open, the flaps open, you know, <laughs> six years ago. And you may feel like, well, I'm not really super committed here. Listen, communion 
isn't celebrated by church attenders and church members. It's a celebration of Christ. And if Christ is the center of your life, then that is all you need to be celebrating communion. Now, there's no pressure whatsoever, zero pressure to take communion. If you don't feel comfortable doing it, we don't have buzzers up above the doors and flaps as you walk out. None of that's going to go down. It's an awesome opportunity to celebrate. Celebrate our forgiveness. This isn't a moment to mourn. I've been in a lot of times where we've taken communion. It's all very solemn and somber. Almost like we're re-mourning the death of Christ. Well, here's the good news. He's not dead anymore. He is alive. And communion is a celebration, a remembrance of his goodness. So here's what I would love to do. I'm going to ask those who are going to be serving communion in this service to come forward, those that are up in the main bar, uh, to do um, what you guys need to to get ready for communion as well. And it's going to be very simple. I'll give you a couple instructions as we're getting ready. In just a moment, not quite yet, but in just a moment, I'm going to have you stand. We're going to pray. We're going to ask God to take what John shared with us today and plant it deep in our hearts because some of us walked in today hanging on to that other trapeze bar. My prayer is that we leave having let go. And we're going to pray that this would not be just something that we do, it's part of things that churches do, that it would mean something to us, and we would carry the remembrance of God's love and forgiveness with us. What a great way to start our week, right? Heading into our week, having remembered the body and the blood of the Lord. And then what's going to happen is we're going to say amen, and then I'm going to invite you to take communion with us. Now, in this tent, you'll see our, our uh, we're narrow in our aisles, and there's uh, about 500 some people in this room, and so it's going to be very easy for crashes to occur. And so the e- let me just tell you, the easiest way to do it is for everyone to move this way to your left to step out into the aisle um, and for you guys as well because Joel and Catherine are standing right over here if everyone just shuffles to their left if you're in the back um, we've got some people in the back that'll be easy for you to do too because there could be some uh, prayers for healing if we just all enter this way in the next minute or two so um, if you'll move to your left it'll make it a lot easier uh, you can be the you know you can choose the, la- the path less followed and possibly get trampled um, but we'd, we'd rather not that happen so here's what we're going to do would you stand with me And would you bow your heads with me? Let me pray for us. Pray for John's message to take root in our hearts. Pray for this remembrance of Christ to be with us throughout the week. Let's pray. Father, I am honored to be able to celebrate the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, with this group of people. For those upstairs and those in the dome, those even watching Online, God, it's such an honor for those of us that are like-minded, for those of us that are Christ followers to continue to celebrate and never forget, Jesus, what you've done for us. God, I am so grateful that there is nothing that we could ever do to separate us from your love. And God, I'm so grateful that we can let go of the past, our past pain, our past depression, our past guilt, the things that we hold on to. God, may we keep that imagery in our head to let go of that trapeze bar to be able to swing into our future. Mm. It's you we honor today, Jesus. We love you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. The Floribama family said, we love you guys. We can't wait to see you next week. Would you move left? You're welcome to take communion with us.